And so Forrest is our, many, he wears many hats here. He's the chair of our faculty senate, he's a clinic supervisor, he teaches between our courses here. I personally have had the pleasure of having um, work done in his private practice. He is phenomenal. We are very blessed here at Oakland to have Forrest. Um, so today he is going to share some things using a PowerPoint presentation and then afterwards do, do a little demonstration with, with you and involve you. Um, with that said, we are wanting to um, utilize the educational experience of Tweena um, more so in reaching other people what is Tweena. And doing that, we have set up a little camera to uh, take his presentation today. Um, because we're doing that, legalities, <laughs> um, there is something that um, we wanted to have uh, your blessing in signing um, in case some shots had to have head or something like that. So um, that's something that we'll be passing out. And also for the demonstration, uh, this is a medical field that you having your grace in a consent form. So Terrace is going to be, um, and I will be passing those out. Um, but with, with no more of me talking at you, I really want to bring Forrest up here to just um, share what is between us here at Oakland. So thank you. Hi, everybody. Like she said, I'm Forrest. So to start with, um, I want to get this up and started here. Oops. Where's Clay? At the top of the present. There we go. Thank you. And I have a handy little clicker. So, before I get started, thank you, Anna. That was a lovely introduction. Better than I could do. Um, I'm going to run this kind of like I run a class. And in my classes, y'all are welcome to stop me at any point and ask me anything. So ask me a question, if you have an idea, if you've had experiences, anything. Throw it out and we'll talk about it. I'm also notorious in my classes for, well, for one thing, walking around a lot and moving a lot. So you kind of got to track with me. But also I tend to go off on tangents really easily. And... The other thing is that I'm going to give an overview about Tweena, but I'm also going to cover the bodywork sec part of the curriculum in general. So, without further ado, so in the bodywork, hold on, I'll get that top part out of there. Oh. Okay, whatever. Oops. Go back for a second. So in the, in the bodywork curriculum, you have two tracks, basically, that you can do. You can either do Tweena, and we'll get to exactly what Tweena is in a little bit, or you can do Shiatsu. And pretty much, I think most of y'all have an idea of what Shiatsu is like, right? Is there, who, has anybody had a Shiatsu treatment? Cool. Has anybody had a sweet Tweena treatment? Huh. Very cool. Almost equal. That, it's kind of unusual because most people have never heard of Tweena. So, in the, we have two tracks, and these are the teachers. That's me. This is John Lou. He, he actually taught me how to do Tweena. I was his TA for about 10 years before I started being the teacher for this. Um, this is Molly. She and Beth are the two that teach Shiatsu. Um, so the first quarter of your career here, you're going to be taking both Tweena and Shiatsu. And you'll take each one for six weeks. And in that time, half of y'all take it in the first six weeks, half of y'all take it in the second six weeks. In that time, the idea isn't for you to really like learn everything about that particular type of body work. The idea is for you to learn enough to make a decision about which one you want to take in the fall, for the rest of the year. So after that, you're going to be taking it for three quarters. Fall quarter is the one where it's half and half. Then you're going to take it in winter, spring, and summer quarters. 
In the summer quarter, we meet twice a week, so it's like five hours a week of body work. One of the things that I find that's most important about the body work is that this is the first time a lot of people have really worked on people in a therapeutic manner. It's the first time, like, I don't know, some of y'all might be coming from a health-oriented health field, but I think a lot of y'all have never actually worked on somebody in a way to try to make them feel better. So for a lot of our students, this is the first time they've ever done that. And I find it's really good to get people into that mode right away. So that's why most of the, mostly we start right up. Um, then also the following year, in your second year, if you're on the three year program, in the, you're going to be doing a quarter in between a or the Shiatsu clinic, where you will be treating people who come, the public coming in and getting treated. Everybody tracking with me on what this looks like so far? Um, it's not in the summertime. The reason is because it's your second year. It's the year before you go into the intern clinic as a full-blown intern. And as a full-blown intern, you, the, we want you to be observing in the clinic the summer before that so you can get handed off patients from the interns who are graduating. So, Twina. What is Twina? Anybody want to take a stab at that? Anybody? Who else had it before? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes? It's from Japanese. Shiatsu is the Japanese style. Oh, Chinese. Twina is Chinese. So, <laughs> Shiatsu is the national style kind of the national style for Japan, right? Twina is Chinese medical massage, and it's got a lot of its own techniques. Um, we have things that we do that basically nobody else does. Um, we have techniques like rolling and one finger meditation, and these are things that literally there's no other style of massage that does these things. But then we also have a lot of stuff that overlaps. So we'll be doing pressing. And like shiatsu, they do a lot of pressing going right along a channel. If we know, we'll do pressing along a channel, but we'll also do our other techniques. Um, it's pronounced twina, and it's spelled like tuna with an I in the middle. The other thing is that with twina is a, a, a really good friend of mine who's also a faculty member here who used to teach, uh, be the TA for twina, she told me once that twina is like the Borg. If you have a good technique, we'll adapt it. So we'll be learning a lot of stuff that is stretches. Um, somebody got the reference. <laughs> By the way, I, sh I should explain to y'all, I am like a total geek. I'm like a nerd. I love all kinds of geek things. So um, aspects of tween up. There's a focus on musculoskeletal conditions. A lot of people come to the Tween Out Clinic and they're looking for a relaxation thing, and that's great. And Shiatsu has a little bit more of a focus on energetics or mental emotional conditions. In Tween Out, our biggest focus is going to be on musculoskeletal conditions. So what are a few examples of musculoskeletal conditions? Raise your hand. Or shout it out. Shout it out. I don't care. Sprain. Sprain. Okay, good. And shoulder. what? Dislocated shoulder. Dislocated shoulder. Actually, I have a funny story about that. The, we we don't teach how to put dislocated shoulders back any longer, but we used to. And the last time I went skiing, I downhill skiing was the first time I'd gone in like a decade. And of course, I dislocate my shoulder while I'm skiing. <laughs> Fortunately. The week before, like the Wednesday, that was the weekend, the Wednesday before, we taught how to set a dislocated shoulder in Twina. So I'm like sitting there and my arm's dangling and I'm, my friend's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, here, pull on this. And he's like, pulls on my arm and I'm like, all right, twist. He's like, this way? I'm like, no, the other way. <laughs> Pops it back in, I ski for the rest of the day, no problem. So sprain, dislocated shoulder, what other kinds of things are musculoskeletal conditions? Arthritis. Arthritis, yeah. Skeletal condition. 
Anything else you can think of? Okay, how about herniated disc? <coughs> yeah, herniated disc. That's one of the things that we teach how to treat. Piriformis syndrome. Um, you know, anything that's related to muscles or skeleton. So that's what our focus is in tween up. We do a lot, in order to focus on this, we do a lot of orthopedic exams. So we go through each disease and we teach how to identify it based on you do these orthopedic exams to, to, to rule it in or to rule it out. And the other thing is that we do a lot of unique techniques a lot of stretches that are going to put joints back into place, that are going to target specific muscles, that are going to just make people feel a lot better. Um, I sometimes describe this as kind of, if you take acupuncture, you take massage, you take physical therapy and chiropractic and you roll it all into one thing, but you only do stretches. You don't, we don't do adjustments, we don't do manipulations. That's kind of what tween is. Stretches are going to be a really big thing. We're going to, we do stretches, all kinds of stretches. For the upper back, for the neck, for the shoulders. We have stretches to put wrist back into place. All kinds of stretches. So, this, this is not here. This is from my trip to Shanghai. I, um, I'm in the doctoral program right now. I should be graduating in September, so. I'm kind of psyched about that. It's, it's a two-year program that you have to have a master's in. But one of the things that you have to do is you have to do externships. You have to study. It, you can do it locally. I chose to go to China to study, and I went to China. This is in Shanghai. I also went to Nanjing, and I went to Busan, Korea. So this is, a, this is an example. This is actually something that I learned to do there because I never learned how to do this particular stretch. This stretch is going to help with the low back because you can see how the low back is rotated. But it's also going to help with the leg or the glutes, the hamstrings, all of it. This is the head of the tween eye department at the hospital that I studied at. And this is from Korea. Like I said, I go off on tangents a little bit. It actually looks a little bit like a, I don't know, torture device a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, they lie here, they're lying prone. Their face goes here. The, these straps wrap around the ankles and the low, lower legs. And then this here, this hinges. So they've already had acupuncture. Oftentimes they've had um, bee venom therapy, BBT, where they actually take a syringe and they like have a little needle and they take and squirt in a little bit of bee venom on a whole bunch of different areas. Works really well, I'm told. I'm allergic to bees, so I didn't have it done. Then they'll do the Twina, or actually in China, it's, or sorry, in Korea it's called Chuna. And one of the things that they do, this hinge here, they'll do the massage and then they'll like use this hinge and bend this end down so they get a really good stretch that way. This is a couple of, the reason I'm throwing these in here is because this is a couple of examples of it in its, in its origin. You know, this is what it looks like in China and in Korea. I couldn't take any pictures of them in Korea because they have privacy laws in China, no problem. So, with tween on, usually we have a specific sequence that we do things in. We start off with some acupuncture. And we always do acupuncture before we do the tween on. The reason for this is that the, the acupuncture is going to relax all the muscles, relax the sinews, move the chi and blood. Whenever you have pain, Basically, it's chi and blood stagnation is the most common diagnosis. And then we do warming up techniques. And we're going to like all get together and do some warming up techniques on each other. So y'all are actually going to learn how to do some really basic tween up. Then we do the stretches. Then we do finishing techniques. And the finishing techniques are going to be slightly different than the warming up techniques. They're usually going to be things that are going to like kind of stimulate you. You'll learn those when you're in class. So, the other thing is, the, we do the three quarter, you do the first quarter to the side, you do the three quarters, and then you do the, the um, clinic, but we also have advanced options in both courses of body work. So, advanced shiatsu, there's two quarters for that, and then in Tuina, there's um, 
one quarter that's advanced tweena in which you would learn how to do the combination of doing both needling and then doing the acupuncture. Because we do the body work in the first year and y'all aren't allowed to do to needling at them because you're, you haven't taken the needling courses, we wait until you've actually gone through those courses for you to be able to combine them. The other thing, they're both in the second year, and then the other thing that we do in, in um, Twina is we do a quarter, actually we're changing it, we're going to be doing two six-week classes, one of reflexology and one of pediatrics, so they're going to be separate classes. And I was just teaching pediatrics today, so this is a picture from earlier today, and this is me treating his name's Arlo, he's a very cute boy, about a year. And the pediatric tweena is different than adult tweena, but it's what we do in place of acupuncture. Because you don't really want to do acupuncture on little babies, because you can, and we have a course for that. But I find that they react, they respond really well to the tweena, so and it's less painful. And then this one is an action shot. One of the things you got to do with kids is you got to meet them on their level and if they're crawling away from you, you just crawl along with them. So, anyways, that's the presentation. Questions, comments, ideas, thoughts? Nothing? <laughs> You're sure? It's perfect in every way. Okay, awesome. So, next thing we're going to do we're going, to do some, we're going to learn some really basic tween up. Now, a lot of people, not only is this the first time that they've you know, ever treated people therapeutically, a lot of people, this is the first time they've ever really like, touched other people or been touched. So, you got to get used to it. You're going to be touching each other and you will be being touched by each other throughout the entire course of your education here. I figure it's better just to start, start now and get used to it. Um, the reason for this is, you know, when you're learning, say, living anatomy class, you're going, to be le you're going to be learning it on each other. When you're learning needling, you will be needling on each other. The only way to really do the education. So, the first thing you do before you treat a person is you wash your hands. So, everybody gets to get up and go wash your hands. <laughs> and I just washed my hands before I came in. And Terrace, where, where's Terrace? We're going to need him. purposes, the woman um, in this picture, Allie, she's a student here, it's her son, and so she's in the class, and in order to demonstrate how to do it, we uh, actually, you know, bring kids in to demonstrate on. So we had her bring in her kid, and he didn't actually have any problems that we were working on specifically. What we did for him, and since he didn't have anything like that, was basically a constitutional treatment to keep him strong so that way he doesn't develop any problems. One of the things that everybody talks about with you know, acupuncture and East Asian medicine, traditional East Asian medicine is that it's preventative. That's what we were doing. We were doing some preventative work. All right. The other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pair up and get away from the table. So move the chairs back. Find somebody to pair up with. I heard I'm like wanted kind of. Because I want to. Yeah. Want the, to. Like the, the band that wanted, you know? For the youngsters out there. All right, so y'all are going to want to like move the chairs away from the table so you can have space. Also waiting on it. 
So grab a grab age pair of pair up. We'll wait until everybody gets back. Never mind. Some of them are, are really getting their hands clean. Some of you guys barely washed them at all. Some of them are getting them real clean like that. <laughs> Actually, when I was in Korea, one of the things I did was I went to the International Con Congress of Oriental Medicine and I saw this poster that was actually a very interesting poster that I'd like to replicate here where they took students' hands and like dipped them in the agar plates and then they did the, um, they put them in the, what are those things called, the uh, incubator and then took pictures of where all the bacteria had grown. It was a very interesting experiment. I want to replicate it here. Bacteria. Yeah. Yes. All right, so how many people are back? Have we got? Yeah. Not quite. It's a long line, so they're Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I should also say, you know, this balance, gender balance, is actually pretty pretty normal for between it for for um, our school. Four, four more people. Four more. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get like the process started. So everybody, pair up. Find somebody. The Maybe you've never talked to them before. That's fine. Each pair, grab a chair from the tables and pull it out into an open space where you can kind of work around each other. I volunteered Terrace to be my model for tonight. So. And Terrace, by the way, has never had tween eye. So, yeah, this is a he's going to be just like y'all. When I just get to receive, I don't have to do anything, right? Right. <laughs> Now it's all reciprocal. Everybody learns and does, right? Yep. Like that. <laughs> all right. So I guess y'all are going to be partners. Grab a chair, pull it away from the tables. Was that everyone? Oh, the two more. Two, two more. Hi. And I think one more. You guys get to be partners. Oh, there's one more after that. Grab a chair. I guess y'all are going to be partners. Grab a chair and pull it away from a table so that y'all are like got space to to work in. I guess we have an uneven number. Um, yeah, you want to grab Fedoja real quick? We'll get you set up with a partner in just a second. So, one of the things that I always really talk to people about when they're learning between a. Uh, and this is a concept that some people have a hard time with. A lot of people have a pretty easy time with this, but it's soft hands. And I'm not talking, you know, oh, you use palm oil, like, you know, <laughs> but not the skin is soft. But when you're setting your hands on your patient, then it's actually a very soft thing. You're just setting them on there. Your hands aren't rigid. They aren't tense. There's no tension in you at all, basically. That's kind of the ideal. So we're going to start off. And you're just going to take the area between your thumb and your index finger. You're going to separate those out. Do you mind working with this lady over here, Fedoja? Thank you. So you're just going to take this area. The, this is in, in um, traditional East Asian medicine. This is called the tiger's mouth. Kind of look at it as a tiger's mouth, right? So you're just going to take that tiger's mouth, the area between the index finger and the thumb, and set it on the person's shoulders so that the thumb is behind them and the, the fingers are in front. Now just very, very relaxed and then you're just going to squeeze a little bit and as you squeeze you're going to pull up and then kind of drop back a little bit. So this is a rhythmic thing. So obviously you have to tighten your hands a little bit to do it but the hands are soft. Yeah, so you can move the hair out of the way So one of the things that, in my class, I've got a lot of really cheesy sayings. <laughs> my students, most of them like them, some of them find them to be a little annoying. So with this one, you want to get the, with this technique, you want to get this part of your hand all the way down onto their shoulder, the very top of their shoulders. So you're not like squeezing like this, you're grabbing all the way down. So remember, this is the tiger mouth, right? So my cheesy saying about, one of my cheesy sayings about this is, this is the tiger mouth, the tiger's hungry. 
Let them bite. <laughs> so, reach all the way down. So you're actually kind of pressing your hand into there and squeeze and pull up. Use your whole hand to do this. So this technique in Chinese is named na, which is tui na. This is grasping. And the idea is that we're going to be, there's different motions that we can do. This one is squeezing in and pulling up. Now tui is going to be kind of the opposite. Tui is going to be pushing. And with this one, you're going to take your partner's head, push it over to the side a little bit, start on their, the, like right where the neck and shoulder come together, and push down. Don't push the head over too much. This isn't like cranking their head over. It's a very gentle, relaxing thing. Just gonna push down a little bit. And you can put you can work right on the top of the shoulder. You can come around to the back a little bit and push down, push across. And the motion with this one is it's going to be deep and moving along. So kind of the opposite of grasping, right? Because grasping was squeezing together and pulling up. This one's pushing in and moving outward. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Pushing with this edge of the hand. Use the root of the palm. Palm. Okay. Now, see you from that side. Tears sorry. Tears his head in the way. <laughs> Your head's in the way, dude. So, in actuality, though, you can do it with any of them. You can do it with the, with the minor thenar eminence, the root of the palm, or the major thenar eminence. And they're each going to have slightly different, different um, impacts or focuses and results. Not going to worry about that tonight. This is just like very basic introduction stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do more pushing, but this time, I'm going to take your hat off you don't mind. So this time, we're going to start right between the eyebrows and push up. And you're just going to use, you can use your index finger, you can use your middle finger. This one is very good for headaches. It's also very relaxing. This, this point right between the eyebrows, its name is Yin Tong. This is a point that I use on every single treatment that I do if the patient's face up. So it's just really relaxing. It's also kind of psychically generating. This is your third eye. Yes, ma'am. Very light. Just fingers just over the skin. And then we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to go for yin, from yin tongue, this point in the middle, and go out along the eyebrows. Now you can do this one with your fingertip. You can do this with the all four fingers. Then we're going to go to the temple. We're going to press in just a tiny bit, not much, just a little bit, and rotate. This is called pressing kneading. Don't rotate too fast. I was waiting for somebody to ask that question. Yes and no. So the question is, does it matter which way you, you do it? And if you think about it, you know, one hand's going to be clock going clockwise and the other hand's going to be going counterclockwise. So. It doesn't really matter that much. I like to do both directions, you know, going from the bottom, back, top, front, down, and then go the other way. But I do both sides the same, like, like this and like this, not like trying to do. <laughs> See, that's why I don't try to do opposites. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is again bring the hands down onto the shoulders, and you're going to use the root of the palm. This is the root of the palm. Just press into the top of the shoulders gently. And your vector in this case is you're going to be pressing straight down towards the floor. Not forward, not backwards, straight down like this. And you can do this, this is called pressing. You can do this technique with 
the root of the palm. You can also use your thumbs. This feels really good. But this is one of those point, this is one of those times where what I was talking about, soft hands. You want your hands soft when you do this, because if you hold your hands really rigid, it's not going to feel nearly as good as if you just relax your hands and drop your body weight in a little bit. And you can kind of work around on the shoulders, different parts. And then the last thing that we're going to do for this evening, before we switch, is we're going to use our forearms to do the same thing. So one of the things I always do, I never button up my sleeves because I'm always pulling up my, elbow to my, my sleeves above my elbows so I can do a lot of techniques like this. Use this part of your forearm or your elbow right where the ridge of the ulna is. And you're going to place that right onto the kind of where the shoulder and the neck come together. Lean forward and then just drop your body weight straight down. Just let your knees go out from under you a little bit so your weight is going straight down. And then you can move your arms up and down like this a little bit. While you've got the weight on them. All right, I lied. There is one last thing we're going to do. So this one's a little bit of an intense technique. Just relax your hands entirely. And this is a hard notion to get you. But you're going to relax your hands entirely and just pat. But keep your wrist completely relaxed. If, if you've ever done drumming, hand drumming, this is basically the same thing. And I'm sure some of y'all have done massage before, so you know what this is like. So. All right. And that is a very basic intro to tween up. Switch who's doing what to whom. Oh, no. You can stay right there. You can stay. Okay. Because i got to walk around and talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I think they're the third eye thing. That's nice. Bye-bye. All right, so is everybody ready? All right, so we're going to start off with a little bit of crash feed. Now remember with crash feed, this is the tiger's mouth. Or this part right here. You're going to set the tiger's mouth all the way down on the shoulders. But keep your hands nice and relaxed though. So you bring the tiger mouth all the way down. Remember, the tiger's hungry. Feed the tiger. <laughs> My other cheesy saying is the name of this is grasping, and grasping's like money, so grab as much as you can. <laughs> Not that everybody has that attitude, and I don't really, but. So, you gotta bring your hands all the way down, you should squeeze your thumbs into your fingers, pull up while you do it, and give a little bit of a roll. And this one, it's kind of rhythmic. Now, one of the most common mistakes I see people make is they're like, I'm going to go really fast and do this. And my cheesy saying for that is, okay, dude, more Mozart, less Metallica. <laughs> so, nice squeezing, pulling, kind of pull back a little bit. Now when you're doing a treatment of this, you can do this for not just this technique, but you'll wind up doing tween up for an hour. So you need to get used to doing this for a while. So take the head, side of the head, tilt it over a little bit, come up. You can use this, the minor thenar eminence, the major thenar eminence, the root of the palm. I like that for the neck, I tend to use the minor, or sorry, the root of the palm. Push down along the shoulders. Don't, don't tweak on the head too much. Don't want any wrenched necks. Y'all don't want to have to come see me after this to get fixed up. <laughs> Switch sides if you haven't switched shoulder you're working on. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate a more advanced technique that y'all don't get to do yet. And that's using the forearm going down. Kind of fun stuff you can play with and get new ideas. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go from yin tongue, which is right between the eyebrows, up to the hairline. Alternating fingers. This one is very gentle, very little pressure. Just running it along, right along the midline, but from the eye, middle of the eyebrows up, right in the middle. And this is another one of those where it's much more Mozart and not so much Metallica. You want this to relax your patient. Open up the third eye a little bit. It's really good for headaches. Okay, then we're going to go from yin tongue, across the top of the eyebrows, out to the temple. Next one we're going to do is we're going to use the root of the palm right at the top of the shoulders. Drop your body weight straight towards the floor. This is pressing. And it's not depressing. So you can like drop your body weight in and then let go a little bit, come up, move your hands out a little bit and go out. Again, drop your body weight straight towards the floor. Let it sit for a second, come up, move your hands out a little bit more. So you're working the whole shoulder from up next to the neck, out to the edge. You can also use your thumbs for this. So put your thumbs right where the neck and the shoulder come together. Drop straight towards the floor. Just kind of let your knees drop out from under you a little bit to drop your body weight in. And then the last one we're going to do is this part of the forearm. Kind of right, right after the elbow. And it's going to be the bony ridge there. It's a pretty good part to use. Again, we're going to go towards the right where the shoulder and the neck come together. Drop your body weight straight down towards the floor. Then you're going to move your arms down in front and up. All right. So, how's everybody feeling? A little bit more relaxed, maybe. So, one of the things that we're working on at OCOM is introducing, and we've actually we've introduced, and we're working with reflection and being conscientious about what we're doing after we're doing it, reflecting on what we've done. So, what do people feel like when they were receiving this? How did it feel? What's some, what's some words to describe that? Relaxing. Relaxing. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Anybody else? Meditative. Meditative. Open. <clears throat> when you were performing it, how did you feel? Attached. Feeling what? Attached. Attached. Focused. Focused is good. Attached is good. Open is good. Basically, most sensations are good. The important thing is being present. Anything else people felt while they were doing it? Excited. 
excited to learn it. What are you over here? Connected. Connected. Yeah. Giving. Good. All right. Who has questions? What? Well, the stuff we did up here is good for headaches. It's part of our headache protocol. Most of the rest of it, these are, these are what we would do as the warming up techniques. So after this, if say we were working on somebody's neck, because the reason we did it here is we don't have to set up tables and stuff. But if we were working on somebody's neck, after this we could do the different stretches that we do. We could do a tiger mouth stretch where they'd actually be lying on the table and we'd be stretching to put their a, a joint back, one of their vertebrae out, that kind of thing. We could do the overall neck stretches to get all the different neck muscles stretched out. Um, so this would be the, what we just did would be the warming up for that and then we do those stretches and then we do the padding, which I just remembered that I forgot to have y'all do at the end. What? Well, some of y'all did. Then we would do the padding type stuff. So this is this particular group of exercise or group of techniques is going to move chi and blood in the neck and shoulders and relieve pain. That was a light touch. Yeah, that was my light touch. <laughs> Trust me, that was my light touch. Any other questions? This is your opportunity. Well, I, I think I want. Yes. When I was feeling it, I was not sure if I was doing it right, so that's what I was feeling when I was doing it. Um, a little bit of apprehension, the maybe? Apprehension that I was not sure if I was doing enough pressure or. So, one of the things that I really focus on when I'm teaching is teaching about communicating, both verbally and non verbally. So, when you're doing it, you know, is your patient, you know, under your hands, are you feeling them relax? But the other thing is, and I, this is something that I do with my patients, and I didn't demonstrate tonight, but I have a set, a set thing that I say every time. I'm going to do the tween on now, okay? So here's the deal. If anything I do hurts or makes you uncomfortable in any way, say stop and I'll stop, okay? Ouch doesn't cut it. So what's the magic word? Stop. Stop. So I'll actually, and literally, I have patients that I've seen for like three, four, five years, and I still say, what's the magic word at least, just to check in with them. It gives them an opportunity to actually have a way of telling you what's going on, and it's very clear. So the other thing I'd say, though, is as, you know, somebody who's never done this before, I wouldn't expect you to get it perfect, and I would actually do expect most people to be a little bit apprehensive, you know. That's normal. Um, the thing is just to work with it, and as you go on and get experience with it, you'll get a lot better at it, and you'll have less apprehension. And as you have less apprehension, it'll actually feel better to get it done and to do it. Does that make sense? Thank you. Other questions? Other question. Yes, ma'am. You had said that you treat herniated discs. I've treated herniated discs, yes. And how, how do you do that and what's the outcome? The outcome is, it, it varies. Um, it depends on how bad of herniation the disc is. Because there's different degrees of herniation. There's like bulging where it's just kind of coming out a little bit. Then there's like where it's kind of like pocketed way out. And then there's where it's like completely blown out and like the part that's inside the disc has spilled out and is oozing all over the place. That kind of forget about it, you know. The actual herniation where it's like herniated out that it's not really like completely gone, mixed results. The part where it's just bulging a little bit, generally really good results. So it depends on how severe it is. And then it also depends on a number of other factors. So it can depend on the patient's age. It can depend on the patient's um, constitution. It can depend on what they do, you know, because if they're doing stuff 
whether it's a job or their hobbies and activities and they're doing stuff that's constantly making it worse, all the treatment in the world ain't really going to do anything for it. So it depends. Generally, if they follow what I say and they get treated, um, usually with something like that, you're going to treat them twice a week. Generally, I've had really good results with it. I've had a few cases where it didn't work at all and I'm kind of baffled by it. Then I've also had cases where people come in and they say, yeah, I've got a herniated disc. And I do the, all those orthopedic exams and I'm like, well, they're like, the, I'm like, you don't have a herniated disc. That will, you know, and they're like, I'm like, you have piriformis syndrome. It's this muscle back here that's squeezing on the nerve that's causing your pain rating down the leg. They're like, oh, no, no, I went and got an MRI. I'm like, okay, you got an MRI, but I did the physical exams and you're not responding to uh, the orthopedic, orthopedic exams that demonstrate that you would have herniated discs. You're, respond, you're getting positive results for piriformis. And I treat them for piriformis, they get better. So one of the things that we teach is about how to differentiate diseases. And I think I've kind of gone on and on on that topic, so sorry. <laughs> Did that answer your question at all, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I said, I have a little bit of a tendency to go on tangents, especially when we start at, when I get people asking me questions because I like answering questions or at least trying to. So, throw out some more questions. Yes, ma'am. So, if somebody does have uh, an intermarriage hernia, do you treat that successfully? Is the is the good treatment for that? Yeah. Yeah, and what? one. Um, well, there's different causes. That basically that's sciatica where they have pain radiating down the leg. There's a lot of different causes for sciatica. And I should actually make something clear. When it is a herniated disc, I make sure to work with the doctor and you really should work with their pre primary care provider, at least making sure that, the, that you're on the same page with them and talking with them and you know making sure that the patient knows that they need to do that. But yeah, it's a really, it, it's, tween out is really good for any musculoskeletal condition. So sciatica, Again, it depends on what's causing it. You know, if it's bone spurs that have grown into the space between where the nerve root comes out and it's bone spurs, you're not going to get rid of them. You can make it so that they don't hurt as much, but you're not going to get rid of them. Um, but, you know, any relief is better than none. Other questions? The side of the room is not doing anything over there. It's all over here. Well, that's because the light's on over here and it's not on over here. And they're all like, mellow. Anybody? I have a question. Okay. How exact does it get with the, on the light pattern, with the, with the point like where you start um, this motion, or how exact is that? Well, where the center is? Or is that just a, because I felt like there was a sort of a sweet spot where I wanted her to so that starts getting into the question of where are acupuncture points and to me acupuncture points move around and there is like one really exact perfect spot that's more important for needling than for tweeting out because your thumb is going to be a lot bigger than that point but to me also like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Terrace here as an uh, example, you know, twi yin tongue could be here, could be here, could be here, and it moves around from person to person, but also moves around on the same person in a small area, you know, I mean, like this big. It moves around within that on, the same, on that person. So that's my view of it. Now, how exact do you have to be? Um, that depends on what class you're in. And point location, you have to be fairly exact. In acupuncture techniques, you have to be more exact. In tween knot, it's a little bit less important because, like I said, you know, we're using thumbs, we're using fingers, we're using elbows and stuff. You're using your elbow. As long as you're in the right general vicinity, you got the point. And answer your question well enough? Now, the flip side to that is the more exact spot you get. If you can find that sweet spot, and just like set your finger on it, that's going to get a better result than if you're like over here, off of that. 
anybody else? What kind of things would make you like that? To me, it, it's energy. Ener you know, it's energy, and energy moves. Energy does not stagnate. Well, no, actually, that's not true. Energy does stagnate, and that's the problem. <laughs> but, you know, the only thing that doesn't... It, it, energy, if the energy isn't moving, then they're dead. That's, that's when you're no longer... That's when your energy is no longer going to be moving. Again, that's getting into philosophy, though. Anybody else? Okay, cool. I think that Anna and Tara still have a bunch of stuff to do with y'all. I'm going to sign off on the computer if I can figure out how. Thank you. Thank you. If you ever have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me here and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Thanks. I hope y'all had fun.